One of the most important concepts that you'll need to understand if you wanna get serious about filmmaking is the f-stop. It's one of the foundational aspects of lighting and once I figured out how they worked, I could never light my scenes without them. We're gonna take a look at this seemingly random list of numbers and figure out a simple way to memorize them like the back of your hand. So every lens has an iris. It's a ring of metal blades that you can open or close to control how much light you wanna let onto the camera sensor. When we open or close our iris, we're creating a hole in the middle that gets bigger or smaller with each adjustment. And the adjustment of this size is what we know as changing our aperture. When we open up our aperture and make it bigger, we're allowing more light onto the camera sensor. And the opposite happens when we close down our iris and make our aperture smaller. As with everything in film, the sizes of these apertures have been standardized. And this is what we know as f-stops. On a literal level, the f-stop can be defined as a proportion between the aperture's diameter and the lens's focal length, and we'll blow through this math really quickly. This is what that proportion looks like. The f in this equation stands for the focal length of the lens, and the d stands for the diameter of the aperture. Dividing these two numbers will give us x, or the amount of light that we'll be getting into our camera. We can rewrite this proportion as f over x equals d, so that any given focal length will give us x amount of light based on the diameter of our aperture. Okay, now that we got the math out of the way, let's look at it in practical terms. In essence, the f-stop tells us how much light is going through our lens, and since it's a standardized number, the amount of light that we're getting for a certain f-stop will carry over between lenses of different focal lengths. Now, there's a whole list of standardized f-stop measurements that you can see here. I know, it looks daunting at first, but let's walk through this together. The first thing I want you to notice is that f-stops are written with an f in the beginning, followed by a slash, and then the number. And while it seems like a dumb formality, it's actually super important to remember that f-stops are essentially a fraction with different proportions for different amounts of light. Now again, this is a scale of f-stops, so let's start from the beginning and figure out how to read this thing. The numbers at the beginning of the scale represent f-stops that let more light in, so in turn a brighter image. Each number on the scale is known as a stop. So when we go from one measurement to the next, we're changing our light input by one stop. In terms of light input, each stop is equal to half the amount of light as the one before it, and twice the amount of light as the one after it. All right, so I have some good news, and I have some bad news. I'll start with the bad news. The bad news is you are expected to memorize this seemingly random list of numbers. But the good news is that there's an incredibly easy trick to do it. Let's take a look at this chart again. As it's laid out right now, it's not very easy to look at. So I'm just gonna reorganize this list. And what I've basically done is just take every other number and lay them out in a zigzag sort of fashion. Can you see it? Look really closely. The f-stop scale has two sets of numbers that are alternating multiplying by two. So on the left side, we go from 1.4 to 2.8 to 5.6. And on the right side, we go from two to four to eight and so on. So if you could just memorize the first two numbers, 1.4 and two, then you can work out the rest of the scale just by alternating, multiplying those numbers by two. Now, obviously all of these numbers are gonna be super important when setting the exposure of your image, and hopefully you're gonna be using them in every single shot. But the concept of f-stops doesn't just end with aperture. We measure light and stops all throughout the exposure triangle, and mastering this concept of f-stops when you're setting your exposure is gonna be super important, especially with something like shutter speed, which is why you need to check out this video to figure out what changing your shutter speed actually does. There's more to it than just exposure. After all, filmmaking is an art, and it goes so far beyond these imaginary standards that film schools wanna tell you what your shutter speed should always be set to. 